Hey, welcome to Number Club. This is Year One Pure, Chapter One, Lesson Three, and you're going to see all that you really need to know about factorising at this point. Now, you're going to see all of those things, but you're still going to need to practice these. Some of this stuff will be from GCSE, and some of it will look a bit more new, but you definitely need to practice this because it's a really important skill. So let's get cracking. So the first type of factorising that you'll see, you should really have been able to do when you're in Year Eight or Year Nine. We're going to factorise 12x to the power of 10 minus 8x to the power of 5. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to write my brackets directly underneath my question, and I'll look at the numbers first. So I'll look at 12 and 8. Now we need to think of which is the highest number that goes into both of those. What is their highest common factor? It's 4, not 2. If you accidentally factor out 2, you'll end up with something that's called part factorised, not fully factorised. So I write my 4 with a little gap, because I'm going to need that space for the x's. Okay. And the things that I ask myself are, how many 4s go into 12? 3. How many 4s go into 8? 2. Okay? Next, I tend to look at the signs as well at the same sort of time. If they're both negative, you factor out the negative. If they're both positive, then you keep it as it is. And if it's one negative, one positive, keep them as they are. You only ever factor anything to do with signs when they're both negative. And I'll show you that in the next question. So I tend to have the numbers written and the signs written pretty much straight away. Now looking at your powers, you can factor out the lowest power. Okay, So you've got x to the power of 10 and you've got x to the power of 5. The lowest power is x to the power of 5. You can factor that out. And what we'll do is we'll do 10 take away 5 is 5. So we'll have x to the power of 5. And 5 take away 5 is nothing. So we don't write anything. Okay. So it's really, really, really quick. If you want to see another one, I'll do a quick um, one more of these just before we move on to the next more difficult type. So with this, signs, they're not both negative, so leave them as they are. Highest common factor of 2 and 8 is 2. Leave a gap. 2's into 2 go once. 2's into 8 go 4 times. Lowest power, x to the 4. And then just do subtractions with your power. So 5 take away 4 is 1, so you can call it um, x to the power of 1. And 4 take away 4 is nothing. And you can just tidy that up as well. So you can say 2x to the 4, that's of x plus 4. Okay, it's nice and easy really. With this question here, brackets again. Next, both signs are negative, so you're going to need to factor out that minus and put the plus in here. This negative here is going to multiply by this term, whatever this will be, to create a negative, and it will multiply by this term, whatever it will be to create a negative there. So if they're both negative, factor it out. If they're both uh, positive, leave it as it is, or if they don't match, leave it as, as it is. You should only ever really worry if they're both negative. Highest common factor of 10 and 25 is 5. 5s and 10 go twice, 5s and 25 go 5 times. Lowest power of x's is x squared, so we factor out x squared. 4 take away 2 is 2. 2 take away 2 is nothing, so I don't write anything. Lowest power for y, well they both actually match, they're both y squared, so the lowest power is y squared. 2 take away 2 is nothing, 2 take away 2 is nothing, so you don't need to write anything. And you should really just tidy it up and you'll get this, 2x squared plus 5, just so that it's not so gappy. But there you go, there's a factorised version of it. Okay, moving on. Now you should recognise again from lower down the school at GCSE, you should recognise a difference of two squares. These are called a difference of two squares. This is square because it's x squared. This is square because it's 5 squared. And it's a difference question if you've got a subtraction. If you had negative 25 plus x squared, that is still difference of two squares. You really, though, you tend to just reorder it and write it like that. Okay? You should have just one subtraction symbol. Just one. Okay. Two brackets. This factorises into two brackets. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 25 is 5. And we can have a plus and a minus in there. Okay, One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. These two brackets are called conjugates of each other. Okay, And if you were to expand it, you'd get straight back to that. Here, this term looks like it might be squared, but it's actually not, because you've got x squared is... Well, you can square root to x, but 3 doesn't square root, it creates a third. So what you should do before you try to factorise this using difference of two squares is to factorise it as best you can straight away. Well, 3 is a common factor 
of 3 and 12. 3 into 3 go once. The x squared is going to stay in there. 12 um, divided by 3 is 4. y to the power of 4. So you get 3 lots of x squared minus y to the power of 4. Note that no known letters, no variables come out there because they don't match at all. Okay. This is square and this is square. Now you can factorise them into a pair of brackets. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 4y to the power of 4 is 2y to the power of 2. Plus and minus. Either order with you, plus or minus. But there you go, there's the difference to two squares. This question, it looks again like it might be a difference of two squares. You've got two terms and you've got a minus, and so that gives you all the flags that you might need. But 4 is square, but x cubed is obviously not squared. So let's factorise it as best we can before we start. So we're going to factor out, well, 1 would be the highest common factor with the numbers, so that wouldn't really do a lot. So we could put that 1, 1 into 4, go 4 times, 1 into 9, go 9 times with the minus. Take out the lowest power here, that's the power of 1, isn't it? So I'm going to take out x to the power of 1. 3 take away 1 is x squared, 1 take away 1 is nothing. And so we actually know that we've got x lots of um, 4, x squared minus 9 or x squared minus 9 but this here this is a difference of two squares this is square this is square it can be halved basically and this is square so you can get x lots of square root of 4 is 2 square root of x squared is x 2x 2x square root of 9 is 3 with a plus and 3 with a minus okay and there's another factorised question. So sometimes you can use difference of two squares, but it can be difficult to spot whether you can or you can't. You should always factor into one bracket if you possibly can to start with, with anything. Always factor into one bracket if you can, straight away every single time. Okay, moving on. The next things, this and this, these are GCSE again. This is a little bit more complicated, but this is still just GCSE stuff really. Um, this is a, this has got something difficult involved in it as well, to be fair. Looking at it, I can't really do much with it. It looks a bit like a quadratic, but it can't be quadratic if the lead term is, is a cubic or if there's a cubic involved in there somewhere. So what I'm going to do is, as I said before, factor it if you can. I'm going to factor out x to the power of 1. That's the power of 1, isn't it? So I'll get x squared minus x to the power of 1, which I don't need to write, plus 30. So I'll get x lots of x squared minus 11x plus 30. Fine. This will factorise, this chunk here. I need two numbers that times to get the coefficient here, which is 1, times 30, which is 30, and two numbers that add to make negative 11. This is called AC factorising. You take your coefficients to x squared and the unit, multiply them up, and that'll give you the the numbers that you need to multiply to and the b coefficient is your add up so i need two numbers that will do that they actually end up being negative five and negative six what they do is tell us what to put in the brackets here so we'll get x lots of x minus five x minus six now they can only jump straight into the brackets because this is just an x squared okay if it was something different from just an x squared like a 2x squared for example you have to do a little bit more work with that okay Factorising by inspection, if you do that, it's fine. So long as you're good at it, you're probably okay, really. Okay. This time, we've got two numbers that will times to get two lots of negative three, which is negative six, but also add to get negative five. Now, what are those numbers? They're going to be negative six and one. Now, when you've got a number here, a coefficient to x squared, these just rewrite that chunk there. They rewrite the b part. Okay, so we've got... 2x squared minus 6x plus 1x minus 3. Is that true? Does minus 6x plus 1x equal negative 5x? Yeah, it does. Okay. You could, should be doing this split the middle thing if you've got a coefficient to x squared other than 1. Split your question up. One side and another side. Leaving the sign with this third term here. Factorise each of these sides. So brackets... The signs aren't both negative, so I'll leave them as they are. Highest common factor of 2 and 6 is 2. 2's into 2 go once. 2's into 6 go three times. 
lowest power of x squared and x to the 1 are x to the power of 1. 2 take away 1 is x to the 1. 1 take away 1 is 0, so you don't need to write it. Here, highest common factor of 1 and 3 is 1. The signs don't match, so I just leave them as they are. If they matched and they were both negative, we'd do something with them. X is obviously going to have to stay as it is, and 3 will have to stay as it is. If you've got two brackets that are the same, that's a very good sign. So, if you want to remind yourself of the previous video where we were doing split and place, we were starting with something that looked a bit like this and getting to something a bit like that. We were undoing a split and place, basically. So we've got those floating chunks there, okay, multiplied by the repeated bracket, okay? And there you go, you can expand that if you want to, but it will give you basically these exact steps in, in reverse, okay? This question here, we've got 2x cubed plus 13x squared plus 15x. Again, if you can factorise, factorise straight away. So we get x, lots of 2x squared plus 13x plus 15. I need two numbers that will times to 30 because they are 2 times 15 and add to 13. They'll be 10 and 3, uh, 10 and 3. So I'll have x lots of, and I'm going to do a lot of work here, so I'm going to give myself some square brackets, a bit of space, why not? I've got 2x squared plus 10x plus 3x plus 15. Split. I'll get 2x lots of x plus 5 plus 3 lots of x plus 5. I'll still have x lots of. Well, I've got my floating bits, which were 2x plus 3 and my repeated bracket, which were x plus 5, giving me the very final answer, which is x lots of 2x plus 3, lots of x plus 5. Job done. OK, I think that's all you really need to know about factorising. At this point, you'll get to more difficult things involving trigonometry and stuff like that later on during the course, but that's all you really need to know for now. OK, thanks for watching. If you found it useful, head to numberclub.org to find more videos and tasks, um, and like and subscribe the channel. Thanks very much.